Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the radio premiere of another delightful musical story, Smiles, by Vincent Newman, starring Gordon McRae and his lovely guest, Elaine Malvin. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and a multitude of other things you use in your daily life. The same railroads that bring you the finest in safe, luxurious, all-weather transportation at the price you can afford. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, sir, Elaine Malvin plays a little girl named Smiles, and I'll be Bob Hastings. A Long Island millionaire, of course, with nothing but time on my hands and you in my arms, nothing but love in you. Who are you singing to, Bob? Oh, nobody. Anybody. Whenever I see the moon coming up over Long Island Sound, I start getting romantic. Better get rid of the moon or get yourself a girl, one or the other. <laughs> You're a fine one to talk, sis. Why don't you get yourself a guy? Oh, I guess I expect too much in a man. Two arms, two legs, must be breathing. <laughs> well, maybe I'm too particular, too. I keep imagining a girl who's honest, smiling, generous, and... You don't want a girl. You want a used car salesman. Oh, well, that's very funny. You know, sis, I can see her in the moonlight, though. I can almost touch her, but she's only in my mind. When the day fades away into twilight, the moon is my light of love. In the night, I am quite a romancer. I find an answer above to bring me consolation. She's my inspiration there in my imagination time on my hands you in my arms nothing but love in you then if you fall once and for all, I'll see my dreams come true. Moments to spare for someone you care for, one love of the girl who isn't there. Oh, I'll find her, Dot. Fate will bring us together. Oh, when you start trusting fate, that's fatal. Well, I went strolling up and down old Manhattan Island. Pushed through crowds under flashing theater marquees. Turned a corner into the lonesome shadow of black skyscrapers against the starlight. All of a sudden, I found myself in the Bowery by an all-night mission where a Salvation Army band was beating out its message of hope to the homeless. There she was. Come gather round, I've got a message for you. 
One simple rule that you should follow Something to cling to when your dreams don't come true And all the world seems dark and hollow There is a compensation to every situation Here is the hope of your salvation help you in some way? No, well, you're helping me right now, uh, just being so beautiful. Excuse me, please. Oh, I didn't mean to be fresh. You see, I've known you for a long time. Sixty seconds? <laughs> You'd better get your watch fixed. No, no, I mean I've been dreaming of you, your very face for years. Huh? That's an old line, if I ever heard one. Well, who are you? I'll ask the questions, Mac. Who are you? Some fancy pants playboy who wants to do a little slumming? Don't be mad, Dick. I'll handle this, Smiles. Is that what they call you? Smiles? It's a silly name, isn't it? When I was a little girl, I got in the habit of smiling, and I never could break it. <laughs> I wish more people had the same trouble. Do you uh, work down here in the Bowery all the time? Anything wrong with that? These people need me. A lot of them are down and out, and I try to make them feel that somebody's interested in them. Somebody cares. So they'll find the spirit to start all over again. I think that's wonderful. We're glad you approve. Now look, buddy, what have you got against me? Do I have to be down and out in order for smiles to pass the time of day? Now listen, Mac, I warned you Please, that... Please, you don't understand. You see, this is my father. Your father? <laughs> that's impossible. This fellow can't be any older than I am. Well, he's my adopted father. I guess you've heard of parents adopting children. Well, with me, it was the other way around. When I was ten years old, I picked him out to take care of me. Well, when did this all happen? When I was in the army in France during the war. Smiles had lost her real mother and father in the bombing. Dick made me change my name from Madelon to Smile. Say, you know, there's a song about a girl named Madelon. I guess it could have been written about me if I'd been a few years older. Oh, Madelon, you are the only one. Oh, Madelon, for you will carry on. It's so long since we have seen a miss. Oh, won't you give us just a kiss? But Madelon, she takes it all in fun. She laughs and says, you see, it can't be done. She would like, but how can she consent? While she's true to the whole regiment. Oh, Madelon, you are the only one. never knew a girl like you. Look, we're having a party tomorrow night at our place out in Long Island. The I... answer is no. Oh, uh, I, I don't want smiles to come. What? Well, not alone. You can come along too, Dad. <laughs> we'll make the party a big charity bazaar. All the benefits go to your mission. Oh, that would be wonderful, wouldn't it, Dick? Well, I, uh... Just tell us where and when. But you don't have to tell me why. <laughs> Robert Brian Hastings, you're in love. Well, sis, maybe. I but don't... this girl is from another world. It's oil and water, caviar and ice cream. They just won't mix. 
You're too cynical, Dot. There's one thing that everybody wants and everybody understands, from Beekman Place to the Bowery. Doesn't cost a dime. Doesn't have anything to do with the clothes you wear or the words you speak. You know what I mean, sis? I got a hunch, but I'm afraid to ask. <laughs> there are smiles that make us happy. There are smiles that make us blue. There are smiles that steal away the teardrops as the sun beams steal away. There are smiles that have a tender meaning That the eyes of love alone may see And the smiles that fill my life with sunshine Are the smiles that you gave to me Dearie, now I just what makes me love you so Just what holds me and enfolds me In its golden glow Dearie, now I see Tis each smile so bright and free For life's sadness turns to gladness When you smile on me That the eyes of love alone may see And the smiles that fill my life with sunshine Are the smiles that you gave to me Oh, you got it back this girl. No, no, I've got it good for her. She's going to be Mrs. Hastings. Well, you're old enough to vote, but a lot of people won't like it. Join the party, Smiles. I didn't know that people anywhere in the world live this way. I'll bet you didn't learn to dance like this at a Bowery mission. In Paris, little girls learn to dance. Then they learn to walk. <laughs> uh, tell me something, Smiles. Hey, pardon me, may I cut in? Oh, sure, sure. Go right ahead, Dad. You got cut. How did you know, sis? You're bleeding slightly. <laughs> She's pretty. Yeah, so I've noticed. The guy who came with her's pretty cute. That's her father. Yeah? Well, I'd like to be her mother. Oh, excuse me, Bob. I've got to make an announcement. What? Uh, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. I guess you all know this party is for one of the all-night missions in the Bowery. Well, one of the girls from that mission is here. Her name is Smiles. Dad, what are you up to? And she's going to sing one of her songs just the way they do it down there on the Bowery. Do you mind, Smiles? I guess not, if you really want me to sing. Carry on, keep smiling, don't give in to sadness. Carry on, keep smiling, fill your heart with gladness. Though your skies may hide the blue for a day, though your eyes may see the blue for a day, you can find Okay, okay, cut the comedy! Da-da-da! Cut the comedy! 
comedy. Is this your idea of a joke? No, I, I didn't know anything about it. You just wanted me to come here so you could make fun of me. Miles, that's not true. Come on, Smiles, I'll take you home. Good night, Mr. Hastings. Thank you for a lovely evening. Smiles. Let her go, Bob. You planned it, didn't you? Just to humiliate her. Oh, can't you see? That's not for you. Carry on, keep smiling. I told you, she's the girl. The only girl. Now she's gone, and I'm right back smack where I started. With time on my hands And here are my arms But what has become of you? Just a moment, we'll return with Act Two of Smile. How many new railroads do you think have been built in America in the last 30 years? The answer is practically every one of today's railroads is a new railroad. For in these past 30 years, the railroad industry has invested more than $20 billion of its own money for all kinds of improvements. And almost half of that has been spent just since the end of World War II. Just think of the changes that this vast investment has made in railroads. First of all, the biggest difference is probably in the fleet of locomotives. Thirty years ago, the diesel locomotive was a dream of the future. The first one, in fact, was just being tried out on the railroads. Today, there are nearly 23,000 of these powerful and efficient diesel units, and most of these have been placed in service in the short period of the last eight years. During this same short period, another big change has been made in freight cars, with more than half a million new, bigger, and better freight cars installed by America's railroads. These new cars make up about 30% of the present fleet of more than one and three-quarter million freight cars which move the nation's commerce. And to carry travelers all over the country, the railroads have bought since the end of the Second World War about 5,000 new passenger train cars, the kind of cars that speed you to your destination with unexcelled comfort and safety. In addition to all this new equipment, the railroads have made countless other improvements, such as push-button terminal operations, expanded signal installations, centralized traffic control, and wider use of radio communications. These are but a few of the many new things that have made today's railroads so different from those of 30 years ago, even those of eight years ago. So when you think of all the things the railroads have done and all the changes that they've made to provide safer and better railroad transportation, you find that the net result is a new railroad system, one that today is doing the most efficient and most dependable job of transportation ever recorded. Here is act two of the Lawrence and Lee version of Vincent Human's Smiles, starring Gordon McRae as Bob and Elaine Malbin as Smiles. There are smiles that make us happy There are smiles that make us blue Well, after the night of that party, I knew I had to reach smiles and explain to her. I tried to see her at the mission, but her father made it crystal clear that I was poison ivy. Get lost, boy. Vamoose, 23, you know what. Oh, I was a very big man in the Bowery. What do you do when the only girl you care about treats you as if you were on the other side of the moon? Okay, you've been moping around long enough, Junior. What you need is the Grand Tour. Grand Tour? Mm-hmm. Six months in Europe. We sail Tuesday on the Ile de France. We may have to change your name again. I know. I'm sorry, Dick, but I just don't feel like smiling. That Long Island Lothario is still double parked in your heart? I'm afraid so. Would I like to give him a ticket? Look, Smiles, there's going to be a reunion of the regiment in Paris next month. If you were there, it would, it would make everything perfect. You can really get that playboy out of your system once we set sail on the Ile de France. Oh, I know what you're thinking. No such luck. I had a cabin, and she was in third class. I stood in my deck, looking out over the ocean, thinking I was running away from her. And there she was at another railing a few yards away, looking out in the same ocean, 
maybe thinking of me. We never saw each other. That is until a few weeks after we landed. Bob Hastings! Can't be. It's not possible. Well, what are you doing here in Paris? Well, I came here to forget about you. But, Smiles, how did you get here? On a boat. I was running away from you. <laughs> it's fate. We both run away right into each other's arms. Look, you know that joke at the party? I was just as angry as you were. It was stupid and cruel and... Oh, I should have known that you wouldn't do such a thing. Oh, smiles. I promise. I'll always be good to you. If you will always be good to me If you will treat me with sympathy Then I will take your advice And be nice as a gentleman can be But when you scold at me all day long And when you hold that I'm always wrong And when you act as my boy I get cross and behave outrageously You may believe that I am childish For the mischief that I do But it makes me kind of childish To be criticized by you You've no idea of how grand I'd I'd be If you would act understandingly And if you would, as you should, just be good Oh, so very good to me Well, Mr. Hastings, we really didn't expect you to show up over here. Never say die, do you? Not if I can help it. Now, look, mister, I'm pretty sick of this phony father bit. You want to know something? So am I. I guess that's why Smiles and I finally decided to get married. Married? Yeah, you can come to the wedding if you want to. Is that true, Smiles? It's true. But I thought that... Well, it doesn't really make much difference what I think now, does it? Congratulations, old man. Ought to be in this ceremony. The groom gives the bride away. Oh, there's not a chance. Once I'm married to Smiles, I'll never give her away to anybody. Oh, Bob, Now, I there's... understand. I understand. Don't explain. I hope you'll be very happy, Smiles. <laughs> Bob. My smiles. I thought you'd be on your honeymoon by now. No. Dick, well, he changed his mind. He ch I don't believe it. When he realized that I was really in love with you, he just decided to step aside. I can't believe it. The heel turns out to be a hero. But <laughs> well, what does that make me? You're a hero, too. Just for waiting until I could make up my mind. You might have had your choice of plenty who'd be pleasing. I love to hear your voice, although I think you're teasing. I waited long and hard. My will was strong, but no. Oh, gee, but I'm elated, so thankful that I waited for you. I might have tumbled for someone else and grumbled. Oh, gosh, I'm glad you stumbled in view. There were times when I wondered just where you could I know I'm slated to be congratulated. Oh, gee, I'm glad I waited for you. Well, 
Where do you want to spend your honeymoon, Smiles? With you. I know, but do you want to take a trip somewhere? We're on a trip now. I want to go home for our honeymoon. We can that spend... way, it'll never be over. We can spend all of our lives. Time on my hand. Scintillating Miss Malvin will be back in just one moment. Meanwhile, our thanks to Doris Singleton, Peter Leeds, and our entire company. Smiles with book by William Anthony McGuire, lyrics by Harold Adamson, Ring Lardner, and Clifford Gray, and music by Vincent Humans, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? As we pointed out earlier on this program, most of today's railroads are really new railroads. They are new because of the billions of dollars that have been invested in new and improved equipment and facilities in recent years. And because of the broad program of research that has been carried on in every part of the railroad plant. Although there is no such thing as a new model every year on the railroads, the changes that have taken place in the past few years have been tremendous. And all this has been brought about so that you and all America will have the finest transportation service to be found anywhere. Thank you, Marvin. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here again is tonight's guest, the charming Elaine Malvin. Thank you, Gordon. What's on the show train schedule next Monday night? Well, we'll have a real change of pace from smiles. Frowns? Oh, no, not exactly. Here's a few measures by way of a sample. Carmen? Oh, Rosemary, I love you. I'm always dreaming of you. Mr. Frimmel, I presume. Right, Dr. Livingston. <laughs> Rudolph Frimmel at his best with the gallant adventure of Rosemary. Virginia Haskins and I will be living it up in the Canadian Northwest. I'll be listening. And we'll be watching you, Elaine, on the NBC TV opera. Uh, that's May 8th, isn't it? That's right. I'll be singing Salome. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, good night, Elaine. <laughs> good night, Gordon. All aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night, and Rose Marie, on behalf of the other members of the cast and of the American Railroads, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Smiles was presented through special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. And reminding you, the Young Women's Christian Association is commemorating its 99th year of providing friendship, guidance, and recreation for more than 3 million young women of America. To an organization with this distinguished record of service, the railroads extend a hearty salute during this national YWCA week. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Tonight, the voice of fire.